All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of uh, 3CM3 Comic Money with the comic contributor chats. We are so stoked this week. We have J.G. Jones on with us. He, uh, we've been emailing back and forth. I'm so excited to have him on with us. We are blown away. We forgot how many amazing books that he's done that are in our collections. I mean, you're talking about cover tunes down here below me and Dollar Bin Digging here and Usual Suspects. And we all went, oh, crap, we have mentioned his books over and over again. And there's some of our favorite books that we go, why, why isn't this worth more? Well, this is a great run. And we're going to talk to him about some of his inspirations, what he has going on and all that different stuff like we normally do. But JG, thank you so much for joining us. Um, hey, thanks for having me. Yes, thank you. Great so to have you with us. It, one of the things that I realized digging through your immense list of books that you've done, I couldn't really, and this is my fault, I probably just didn't dig it deep enough. Where, what book did you start with? Or where where did you start? Did you start in Valiant? Did you start in DC? Did you start in Marvel? Further back than Valiant. <laughs> well, Valiant was up and running. Um, after Jim Shooter left uh, Valiant, he started a little company called Defiant. Um, okay. Dark short Dominion. Lived, um, didn't last too long, but I um, drew a few pages of a book with a friend of mine writing and I think I got nine or 10 pages done and went to the New York Comic Con back when they held it in the middle of winter. And it sounds like one of those old dad's tales, but we literally, because there's no subway on the west side of town, had to walk through two feet of snow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was that like 75? No, that was what, mid 90s? Um, Yeah, I think 93, maybe okay. something like that. We had Actually, a guy the West Side Highway over there. There's no room for a there's no room for a subway really. You got the yeah, yeah. there's uh you're walking, you know. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Was it over there at the Javits Center? Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know who Jim Shooter was at the time, and my buddy kind of <laughs> nudged me in the ribs and he goes, Show this dude, show this dude. So um Jim looked at my pages and basically the first guy I ever showed my work to hired me on the spot. So that's really nice. cool. I mean, I understand why. Look at, I mean, but oh, I, I was terrible. Then. <laughs> <laughs> he just took a flyer. <laughs> Maybe he was desperate. I don't know. And that is something like one of the things you said you want to talk about was the longevity. And we've talked to two or three artists now who talk about they got their start by showing up at, at, at San Diego Con or showing up at New York and walking in with their little stack of papers and just begging someone to look at it. Uh, we talked to John Boyd Myers, who did the same thing he, with San Diego Con a few times. I think Kari Andrews said he did something similar. And, like, just go you know, that that's lost now, I think, with the new guys. Because you don't do that. You do it through Instagram. You do it through. Um, but how was the pressure of going to sit in New York Comic Con with your little stack going, please like me? Of course, you had a good story. You didn't have that. Uh, go back and try again. But hey, I'm sure you have people you've worked with that say, oh, no, it was hell. I didn't want to do that. Um well, I had been living in New York trying to be a, a fine art painter. Mm. My um, day job, three, four days a week, was working at a, a weekly paper. Um, and that's where I met my friend who was a writer at the paper that I wrote the books with. Um, Wednesday was the day we'd go down to the comic book shop. You know, So I pretty mm. much had a thing going on, but mm. I wasn't really happy with where I was. So I, um, I got really addicted to all the stuff that was coming out in the early nineties. I mean, Hellboy had just dropped in a John Byrne book, um, next men or something like that. Yeah. 14 or 20, 21 is the official, but 14, we found out he's on the back of a movie poster. <laughs> That's right. That's color. I almost forgot. <laughs> <laughs> stuff um dino cadillacs and dinosaurs and uh xenozoic and all that stuff and i was like oh wouldn't this be a fun way to to uh make a living if i could <laughs> pull it off um so i just took a flyer and did it and uh, it was pretty rough for a few years so because i think we dropped pete you dropped this in yeah i think it, is this, this was the title is this what you said the first book was? Yeah. Yep. That is the first book I ever drew. It's a dark dominion. So that uh 
Is that one of those like, oh man, there's signed copies out there that are going to be worth a bunch because Dark Dominion, JG Jones, original art. Well, that was, we talked to someone who did Rune uh, with Barry Windsor Smith, and that's another one of those books that like Love the that. people that loved it when it came out, but now it's just in fills those dollar bins. <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, it was the thing that it drew me to the stands. I mean, that that that's one of the few books that drew me back. It's that's odd. Cool. I don't even own a single copy of it now, but just one of those books. And the '90s were weird for all of us. I mean, I think we all fell for something in the '90s, yeah. and then you know had a whole short box. Full of it. Them them being that many leftovers because they made so many back then, like just yeah. printing wise, like they yeah. printed everything a ton. Yeah, so the value of it was increased. Yeah. They thought they were printing money, but the secret is you, <laughs> you print it. <laughs> yeah. So you you went from doing those, but to be honest, that's not where I remember you from. I I remember just some gorgeous books that you did for DC. That's where really when I think through what someone did, and then you did Marvel. Did you do Marvel before DC? Yeah, I, uh, I did Marvel before DC, but before that, I um did another stop with Jim at Broadway Comics, and that closed down. Um, and I was basically without work, and I ran into my buddy um, Tony Bedard on the street, uh, who was doing some writing, and he was working for Crusade Comics. And he goes, "Come on, I'm going to this party for uh, that Billy Tucci's having. I'll, I'll introduce you." And you know. By the end of the night of <laughs> with Billy Tucci, I had myself a job. <laughs> Having met Billy Tucci, I can only imagine what his parties are like. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that guy is something else, man. Before <laughs> Joe, Joe had started um, uh, working for Marvel Knights, you know, creating Marvel Knights. So we all hung out at the same bars and everything, and I just kind of got to know them. And occasionally Jimmy would pull me aside and say, let me see what you're doing, let me see what you're doing. Um, I guess he didn't feel I was quite ready. And then when they got Marvel Knights up and running, uh, they hired me immediately to draw the Black Widow book. And yeah, there she is. Yep. That was my first big, like, uh, kaboom. Um, even though I'd been working for well over seven years, I think, at that point. But that, I mean... And th that's one of those books that, that w I know I've picked up multiple times. That these all three of us have picked it up. We've chased, especially this series. And there's one other, there's a couple of the Black Widow little mini series. But I did love this this one particularly. But another one that you did, I guess, at, close to it, or this one here. Yep, that you was, got to create yeah. a character. Yeah. So um, Grant Morrison um, <laughs> brought this script in, and basically, it was his idea for an alternate Marvel universe was going to kick off there. And I think that's what ended up being the whole civil war um, saga, even though he didn't write that, it was his idea to have like a separate Marvel universe with all this, the same characters basically, but different storylines and things going on. That's really, I didn't even think about that. Like, yeah, the I just remember like some of these, going back and rereading them and like, okay, like the, your, cause I think we actually have, uh, it's one of those, we've got so many things you did. It's hard to pull out all your different, <laughs> Just I mean, goodness, how dare you? I was, um, yeah, seriously. For me, I mean, for me, it was, it was always the wonder woman covers that, that yeah. got me going. But you, you also know, did was, interiors, which is, which is yeah. fascinating as well. Cause we don't get that a lot. Like these days well, it's all about covers, like the actual yeah. interior work. Especially for the crazy. painters especially yeah. for the painters like you. I mean, you, you just don't, it just doesn't seem like those two things would, unless you're doing fully painted interiors like Dave McKean did or something like that. Yeah. You know, or Sienkiewicz. I did a book that not many people know about that's completely painted, but we'll get to that down the road. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Now we're like, really? Uh, oh, uh oh. So oh, I man. Can't, I Ever the every week I spend my money on this show. Man, one of these weeks I'm not gonna buy anything. <laughs> not this week. <laughs> so well, I, I did throw it up here, but here's an exa example of from your Marvel Boy run. Um I'm not sure which issue this is. I think it's in one. Okay. I get pulled up in issue one. And then here's an example, just so and this is more so people watching can see just how great like the interiors were. This is gorgeous. Oh from Black man, Widow. That's a, oh yeah, Black Widow. 
Yeah. Uh, Especially with Yelena Belova in there too. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that is amazing. Which and that's part of the reason these got renewed interest is because of the Black Widow movie and Yelena yeah. becoming into it and and just because you were you were instrumental in just creating her look. I mean, along with I know she had been created and I think a, I don't think it was your first issue because she actually came out in, in Humans with Jay Lee issue number five yeah. or whatever. But just creating this character. Yeah, we were all working up in the room um, for Marvel Night. Marvel Night giving them like this little tiny penthouse room on the roof. So they wanted to, um, we had already started work on the book and they said, let's just ease it by dropping her in uh, Jay's book. Um, all the ideas in a lot of those books were kind of weaving in and out of each other to make mm. their own little universe of books. So was that was, with Axel? Was he the ones who are sitting in the room? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Axel was sort of, babysitting that whole thing. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely your look on the character that everyone knows, in my yeah. opinion. <laughs> yeah. So you, I, I, mean, I have a unique style, you know, but... Oh, definitely. It's only unique um, at that time compared to everything else that was going on. I think a lot of my style was coming out of the uh, 70s uh, stuff that I had been reading, like the magazines, the Warren publications... Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, heavy metal, you know, the uh, things that were a little more rendered. I was basically, in my mind, just trying to bring that style up into um, current comic books, which had been kind of all image style for a mm -hmm. long time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I basically couldn't draw that way. It <laughs> would have been nice. I probably would have made a lot of money, but I didn't <laughs> draw that way. So, Did you have any specific influences? Oh my God, my influences are everything under the sun, everything you can pull out. I'm like an omnivore. I just <laughs> inhale all that stuff. But I, I can give you a name that I don't think anybody's going to think of, and that's Mike Plug. Ooh, uh, nice. Okay. Yeah, no, I would not have thought that. <laughs> I was obsessed with those old Planet of the Apes. Uh, <laughs> yes magazines that Marvel had put out, and he oh, had a little black and white. Um, series in the back of that book that he had done uh, wash tones on. So I was doing black and white pen and ink with wash tones on my stuff because I was like, yeah, let's go my blue. Let's do it. <laughs> Not to mention the beautiful painted covers on all those magazines, which of course would be what you would end up doing. Beautiful painted covers really in, in a similar sort of vein as those. So it's kind of, kind of strange how that, how that happened. I, I loved all of those uh, Warren and, and the Marvel series. You know, they had, like you said, the Conans had the great painted covers. Uh, mm. They had Doc Savage for a while. Um, Which is, you ended up doing yeah, Doc Savage? Baby, that's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and you can tell with these covers that, I mean, sadly, Doc Savage never took off again in the same way. But yeah. the passion that you should, I can see it because the enthusiasm, these covers are beautiful. And they mm -hmm. they and just never issues too. Say that again. I Please. wrote those issues too. Yeah. I, oh wow. See, and I don't think I. I guess I can read the read top it down billing, below, man. See. Top billing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, I need to look a little closer when I. Like I said, you have such a wide roth of stuff. I'm like, these two below me are more the experts on JG Jones. I was more stoked because of these books that you did. I mean, you brought in one of my favorite characters just to sit right here. So you, you oh, brought in Batwoman. Cool. I mean, of course, that's not the cover. This is the cover that we love. Oh, <laughs> yes. Right, right next to me. Yeah. Well, you found a virgin a virgin uh, copy. Yeah, of this, this right. is no, 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 we don't want to all adulterate this. We want the beauty right yeah. here. I <laughs> mean, art. That is such a badass <laughs> cover, man. That book <laughs> coming right at you. <laughs> so, it's the crook. Oh, it's, it's, there's just so much going on in this cover. And it's, I think it was like a one for 10. And this is the first appearance. Well, actually, the bat, this is the big cover from the detective run. Just yep. so gorgeous that you did. Of course, then I didn't realize you had done the week 11, which is like the first cover appearance of her um, as Batwoman or whatever. So you got, like, we got to see Marvel Boy. We got to see, you got to create all some of these big characters that we still go crazy for. Like, I mean, she's had her own TV show. Did you watch that TV show and go, I helped create her look. <laughs> um, 
you know, everybody that if they're lucky enough to be around the business for a while, they're going to have some characters that they, if not designed, redesigned, or, you know, you want to have your hand in, you want to have a piece of the history. So yeah, it's always kind of uh, nice when your stuff shows up elsewhere long after you're done playing with it. Um, did you feel like you had to re like reinvent yourself every five or 10 years to, to stay relevant? Or do you feel like people were pretty, um, pretty interested in you staying with your style the whole way through? Cause I, and I feel like there's a little bit of both. I think that there's definitely, you look at a cover and you say, that's Jones, no doubt about it. doesn't matter what decade it is, but then there's obviously like little nuanced changes throughout the time. Did you do those purposefully or did that just sort of evolve organically over time? It's, Kind of organic it just depends on what sort of thing i'm interested in at the time um some of like in the when i did 52 the 52 covers um that's a long haul of covers yeah so yeah. i can stick with any one plan from one to the next um i figured that my style would show through but i had a lot of different interests in old um illustration uh 70s album covers um you know renaissance painting anything that i thought would work for that particular issue um some of them are really design heavy which i like to do stuff like that a lot of times um people like dave johnson are so good at that really mm -hmm. graphic uh level of design sometimes mm -hmm. Just want to bite off a little bit of that um, apple and do on it too. So you know, it was just whatever I'm feeling at the time. Um, sometimes I'll even do that for a whole series. Uh, I did some JLA covers, I think, about four or five years ago, and those were all really more about the design of the cover than the uh, illustration quality. I love if this is the ones you're talking about. Yeah, I, I went and bought mm -hmm. like every one of these strictly because of the cover, like Me because too. of what you did. They were yeah. gorgeous. Oh, this is the only image I grabbed, but there's the one with Batman walking through the snow and like just like the that. the way you use negative space was amazing to me. You you made a con every you could tell everything was on purpose, even though it was white. Like you chose to leave it white, and there's a reason why. Well, I feel I have that same feeling on the uh, the the final the final crisis books too. Is that there's a oh my gosh, oh man, can we just pray to that for a second? That's incredible. No, that's, that's no. my favorite. <laughs> that's my favorite cover of yours right there by far. Um, but I mean, ominous with that light coming down. You don't. Oh, know what's gosh, it's gorgeous. It's it is perfect. Good. <laughs> it is perfect. It is. That's one of those books I buy every time I see it. I don't care how many copies I have because I, yeah, I want a perfect one. Uh, eventually, I want to make sure it's ridiculous. But I mean, it, it's just the way it is. And you, when you latch on to your favorite, that is my favorite cover of yours. Yeah, Thank well, you. that entire run. But that's when you pull up that run. Like you said, this is we find it all the time, except for this issue. This is usually the one issue that you won't find that in the dark seed one because that dark seed one just so awesome. The colors, mm -hmm. the way you did the purples and blues. Uh, when the way you did pull that off, but Wonder Woman you, could be tough too. Like true. Just, okay, maybe they're all hard because yeah, we all geek out and we we pick them up and go. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I want a complete set and I want the the perfect complete set of this JG set because um, it shows off the art so nicely. So I feel like so few times does the layout of a cover really accentuate the art. Usually ruins it. But in this case, I, I always like the way they were laid out with sort of the vertical rather than horizontal stuff going on. It just draws your eye a little better. So this series, for whatever reason, sticks out to me every single time I find it. But that a lot yeah. of it goes down to uh, the um, art director who was Mark Chiarella for all those years. He and I sat down and talked about how can we make these covers look completely different than anything else um, on the shelves. Um, and decided to just go with a big iconic image and don't even worry about the logo we'll just um work the, the logo i don't know if you've noticed but in the early issues the logo is very solid and it mm -hmm. disintegrates mm -hmm. over time until it's almost not there i don't think i noticed that it did that i noticed that there were darker and like now i'm saying now i need to pull all seven images up and put yeah, them side by side to see the first one 
that's all that's all Mark Chiarella's idea because mm. like, he's always thinking you know he's well he's, it was a timeless out. idea because yeah. they still stand out I mean he's, amidst all the other creative ideas that publishers have done over the last decade those books still pop off the shelf when you see them so yeah. and you did bravo, the interiors gentlemen. for this too did you do the insides yeah, as well? Yeah. He's doing the interiors, and I started. That's when I really started. Um, the illness started to show up, even though I was not diagnosed yet. Um, mm. I had this uh, rare blood cancer called polycythemia vera, and um, basically, your body just makes too many blood products, so too many platelets, too many red cells, too many white cells, and um, my blood ended up being so thick that it couldn't carry oxygen properly. Oh man. I was um, patching out at the desk, um, sleeping for hours. You know, it's like, I'm just gonna put my head down here for a second, then I'll come back and finish this. I wake up, it'd be the middle of the night. So I ended up, even though I didn't know what was going on, I just kept getting further and further behind. So I was doing two covers an issue, painted, and it was a 30, 30 or 32 pages, an issue of pencils and inks. And I was just burning the camera ends and it all blew up on me. Yeah. Um, so luckily, how do you even do that? How do you even do that? <laughs> not, you know, not sick. I mean, I, I mean, I don't even know how you could possibly accomplish that in any <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> well, it blows relationships out of the water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I imagine it must. It definitely can be a strain, but um, you know, there are times in your career when you really want to make a statement book. You know, you want to do something that's like, "Bow, wow, look at this! This yeah. dude did this thing. Can you believe it?" And it, for me, unfortunately, it kind of all the wheels fell off halfway through. But it wasn't from lack of trying, that's for sure. Yeah. I think you'll probably be happy to know that it's not the way it looks from our end. I yeah, mean, no. we, we, we look at some of these, some of these sets of books, these runs of books, even if you didn't do the whole run, just, just the chunk of it, for instance, the final crisis books or your wonder woman run or something that's, you know, a little more, more, more lengthy. I mean, this whole group, you find that in a box and you're like, this is the Jones set right here, you know, and that's substantial, especially when you think about the fact that they're all painted. I mean, that's, I, it's astounding to me. I was so I, I, thrilled that they were letting me paint because mm. that, that was sort of my background before I got into comics. And it's something I can, I continue to paint covers whenever they would let me and pay me for it. Um, but I really loved that run on Wonder Woman. I was terrified because I was following Adam Hughes's great run on that yeah. book. Like, this is a good, this is a good place to go. If you're going to follow Hughes, that's a good place to go. <laughs> I, I said, I must be the stupidest guy in comics. To follow <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, what was it? A year and a half, almost two year run. Yeah, that's about, that's, uh, yeah. I don't know the exact amount of issues, but that's about right. Yeah. And I was doing wanted at the same time. I remember as a big chunk of that Wonder Woman series. Now, did you get to decide on who you modeled some of the characters' looks after? Like, was it your decision or, or Millar's the M and M? Mark writes in his script. This is so and so. He cast the like he's doing the movie. You know, it's gotcha. like, okay, I can do that. I so, who is this supposed to be? Um, Halle, Halle Berry. Berry. That's, okay, that's what I thought. I was just, I was like, okay, I got. I don't want to jump in a gun and then go. Oh wait, no, that's not Catwoman. Um, <laughs> Halle Berry cat one that is, but uh, but yeah, no, I mean, and that's you got to like when we're going through your the two thousands, you did some of the iconic covers that we go we pick up every time we see them, and it, it's starting to realize like, man, I didn't realize you did this one and this one, uh, because did you? I, I think I'm right. You did these two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did um, eighteen of the Why the Last Man covers. Um, that and that's just those covers are. I mean, I, I when I look through them now, I wasn't a huge fan of the big white, uh, the the white little bar where the white the last man is. Yeah, the painted is, part is awesome. Like 
cut into my art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's annoying. This is one well, Vertigo hat because you were working on um, I love this uh, one. the knockout book during that time too, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Code took over for Chiodo, or I forget who you took over yeah. for. But yeah, that that book was a lot of fun. Yeah, there's some really fun covers in that series. And the great thing about that series for me personally was there were no rules. I mean, the covers only tangentially touched on whatever was going on. <laughs> book you know it's just like make it fun make it cool Throw what you want. yeah well, there was a couple like I don't, i'm not even sure if they're yours but i just remember seeing like the wizard of Oz. like it was like hey i'm just gonna do a movie theme i don't even know as long as it has the characters and i'm just like it was so much fun just to flip through because like occasionally you'll come across a run now it's near impossible now to find a run of why the last man but there's a time period where you could find them and uh it was always great to see the different covers uh and and i knowing that you did some of them and and everything like that, like that spaceman is just gorgeous. I pick it up that whenever is. I can find it. Uh, I never see that one anymore. It's always yeah. gone. The first one I would the, never see because it's the first one. That I painted with acrylics instead of um, my usual water is watercolor for okay. uh, comics just because it's fast and I know it really well. Mm -hmm. I know what I need to do. But I wanted fast. that spaceman cover to just be, you know, have a little bit more meat like a, yeah. you know, that oil painting look to it. So. The texture of the of the material on the yeah, suit is it looks like a photograph. It's insane to me. Uh, it, that's so good. And they let me get rid of that white bar by uh, yes. <laughs> yeah across the uh, the visor. Yeah, and I, now that you said that you did acrylic and and this is watercolor, I can tell the difference. Like until you said that, because just how vibrant the colors are on this cover versus. Versus the other cover, I mean, both covers are great, but yeah, you you accomplish that by just switching materials. Like, I mean, that's the that's the amazing thing too. Yeah, it gives it a little bit more of a solidity. Mm. That you know, watercolors has a little more of an ephemeral finish to it. Yeah, yeah. How how big do you work your originals? Um. Well, it's changed over the years. I think when I was doing. Uh, Why the Last Man and um, Codename Knockout, I was working really large, but I had a larger scanner and always just worked to the size of my scanner. <laughs> <laughs> so now I think I'm working about um, 11 by 17 usually oh, okay. for painted covers. Um, it gives me a, a little room to run, but but that's still small, though, for the amount of detail that you're accomplishing in those. I mean, that yeah. you know, overall, in yeah, my opinion, what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking if I were to even attempt that, which would be a big mistake, uh, that I would want to work as big as possible to try to. <laughs> but, yeah, that's crazy. So there's one book that I, it, when I look at all the different covers that you've done, there's one series that you did that you reminds me more of your when you talked about graphic design. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, how did you get in that we get that to that I painted? Yeah. How did you get to here? Like this is just not you from what we've seen everything else. Like this and it's a what, a four issue story? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the idea with the covers um was I really love those old uh night late 20s, early 30s, um, WPA poster style. Where okay, everything. now I see it, yeah. Um, so the color palette's just really limited. It's like two or three colors, and the drawing is really graphic with these uh, little stipple transitions uh -huh. um, to imitate that sort of silk screen style. Yeah. So and you I, did this with Mark Wade? Like you and him like wrote and drew? Like, or yeah, we wrote it together and um, he did the script and um, I painted the whole thing um, because, you know, I wasn't going to let Alex Ross get away with that his whole career. Being <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say that about 10 minutes ago and I said, no, no, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't say that <laughs> but also more than that, I, when I first got interested in having a career in comics, I was looking at, um, People like um, Kent Williams and John J. Muth and those guys that did those beautifully painted books 
uh, Pratt was a huge hero of mine. And I sort of sat down and I tried to decide which direction am I going to go here? If I want to make a living, I need to just draw straight comics straight. Um, but when I'd been in long enough that I'd sort of established a name and everything, I was like, okay, now I want to bring back some of these other skills and mm -hmm. desires really, because I just love paint and that, uh, sort of, just tasty quality it's like food to me you know <laughs> and carve out with a paintbrush instead of uh, drawing with pen and pencil well it definitely adds a depth and texture that you just you you there's no other way to get it maybe artificially with computer coloring these days you could get a little bit there but it's just not the same uh, and, and I, I don't know you know, I don't know the ins and outs of the difference between digital media and, and physical media, but to me, yeah. I feel like for the most part, let's say 90% of the time, I can look at a piece and go, that's clearly done in real life. I mean, the, the depth is, it's not possible to achieve that really any other way. Well, just get more imperfections, which give it character when it's, you know. Yeah, I done exactly. Like, I love the digital art. I really do. I'm, I'm a fan of a lot of really good, like digital painters and, um, mm -hmm especially people who design for film just do some gorgeous, gorgeous work. And when I was getting my stem cell transplant, I was in the hospital for six weeks and I was like, well, I can't paint or draw here. So what am I going to do? Um, I had my laptop with me and I just started teaching myself procreate in the hospital. Okay. Um, and I got out and I was like, well, let me see if I can do some of this um, digital painting or a cover. And I did a cover for a Star Wars book uh, right after I got out of the hospital. Oh, crap. You're, hmm. you're talking to the Star Wars experts down yeah. here going, I, I don't know, know what that, that is. I, I never saw it because they rejected the cover. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> can you submit Wait, some digital image of that? <laughs> they actually rejected one of your covers. Seriously? Yeah. I said it's nice, but it's not a JG Jones. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> That's some balls to come back to you and say now, that. <laughs> to, and now, oh I, now, please tell me it was like Osoka and uh, Dar Bubba Fett on the cover because these guys would just go, "I'll buy it off you immediately." Just tell me like the characters and <laughs> it was Darth. It was Darth. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we can live with Darth. But I mean, yeah. if it was like, I mean, we like Darth, but I mean, if you yeah. hit like Mike's, Mike's girl crush on Ahsoka, it's like his free oh, yeah. cast with his wife. Um, <laughs> <laughs> with, an, with an alien with things off coming off her head. Yeah. <laughs> I did paint a little Star Wars book a few years ago, a little hardback book. That was a lot of fun. Ooh, okay. Uh, tell us, we, we'll pull up the cover. because. We... <laughs> what is that? Yeah, because I don't know oh. if I have it. That to the library he goes. <laughs> it feels like one of those little uh, hit, hit the rooms, you know, they disappear and get bigger. But. Yeah. <laughs> the TARDIS. Oh, I remember that. Oh my gosh, that's yours. It was tons of fun. I remember seeing that. I, I would not have, I mean, it wouldn't have even occurred to me that that was a cover you'd done. Yeah, I think my most fun painting in here was this little story you can there see you that oh wow that i've never seen so there's illustrations yeah. throughout it yeah the gang is sort of um buskers running around the uh universe trying to earn, earn a few dimes you know that's that's I'll all like we're going, crap. We're we done. always find something Star Wars related when we do the show. No. Yeah. It almost seems impossible to, to like stay away from it. There's so much of it out there. If you've been in the business long enough, you're bound to have overlapped with it at some point. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm old enough that I remember going to see it at the theaters the first time. Yeah. You know, and beg them to let me have that poster as soon as the movie closed. <laughs> <laughs> I had that original uh, film poster for years and years and years and I gave it to this uh, buddy of mine for a wedding gift and then we had a big falling out and <laughs> oh, oh man you're like can I have my poster back <laughs> oh well so it happens you said you started did you actually end up doing covers though that were procreate or like more digital because like I do feel like with your 
like this has elements of more of that procreate though it's still you i just bringing in more of that digital feel i don't know if it is i'm just asking um i'm not really competent enough to just anything i do digitally i'm very slow because i don't know the tools well mm -hmm. enough. um i like to sketch with it because i can do color things really quick um but i'm just so used to painting i've been painting since i was 12 years old mm -hmm. and to just pick up a brush is so much easier for me i can get it straight out of my head and onto the page without um looking around through that little file of brushes and yeah, where's my brush <laughs> dialing my color up you know i just mix my color on my palette and um i actually wish i were better at it because i really love the look of a lot of it mm -hmm. but at the same time uh, there's something about paint to me um right after i got out of the hospital we uh opened up the front room of uh, the next room in my house here is now my oil painting studio. So I can't say what it is yet, but I just oil painted my first cover in a long, long time. So Ooh, that was going to be my next question was, what are you up to? Up there soon. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so, okay. Cause we have noticed there since you were sick or whatever, you've done less and less, like not quite as many covers, but the ones you do do, I mean, because we're collectors, we speculate, we do all these different things. You have some covers that are hard to find, and they're gorgeous covers. One being this one here, mm. oh, yeah. and we just and this and it doesn't. And part of it's like it doesn't feel like a JG cover, but it mm. is. Like it's just it's such a gorgeous cover, and this is a hard, hard, hard book to find. Yeah, I like uh, to keep everybody guessing. You know, I like to mix it up. <laughs> You did the Batgirl one too, I think, right? On the motorcycle. Yeah. The oh, that was so much fun. Yeah. Oh, that's a really like great, that. that's another really hard, hard one to find too. So, I mean, you, we, we love your covers and sometimes it's like, oh crap. And then I'm a Spider-Man guy. So I was so excited Thank to see you. this one. And I, I think you did a couple for this, the superior Spider-Man and for uh, Spider-Man 2099 or whatever. That, well, you did the actual, the a bunch of this 2099, didn't you? Like the first, Three or four, or did, uh, three, I think, something like that. There were a couple did reintroduce. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I, this is just such a powerful cover, and like, and you bring in a little bit of this. It reminds me of trying to do that close up feel, yeah. like the same sort of attitude, but just more powerful. I it's guess like maybe to that great costume design for me. Mm -hmm. That's what I like, got I like the texture on that one. Yeah. Like I feel like if I could feel the uniform, like just the yeah, color. yeah, and that texture, you know, yeah, oh yeah, you can definitely just the the detail that you went into to adding those little little divots into the suits and the, then the make it shiny where it's shiny. Like the arms remind me of her, but then when then you the the details of the, the mask and everything, and it, I'm just like wow. Well, I grabbed the back right, roll. It gets me off about doing a cover, you know. <laughs> and and we well, mentioned the back girl, and there it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which I mean, this does not feel. Like no, I wouldn't have. I it, you know right away I wouldn't have pointed to you as the artist on that until I until I saw the signature down in the bottom. But it's it's an amazing cover, very sought after. They're all, you know, it's like I said, it's just fun to do different things and try doing them in different ways for me. So was that watercolor as well or was that acrylic or? Um, I did not um, do the color on that. I just did that one black and white. Okay. So maybe why. Yeah, that one here felt okay. more like pencil and ink. Okay. Well, that makes sense then for the look. Because uh, like you definitely, when you paint your covers, it has a distinct look to it that, I mean, this yeah. is of course an iconic but like knowing that, okay, you did the pencils for it and the ink. Okay, that makes more sense now. When I'm looking, I'm like, okay, I see your style, but not quite the same. Um, Usually, when I'm painting, the lighting is very dramatic. Mm -hmm. I like. I, I always love this one, this uh, Vixen cover that you did. I just, uh, that's I just right. fantastic. I just love the shadow and just the the look off into the distance. Like, I like the lion too. Yeah, the lion is awesome. And the little the heron hanging out just behind her. Yeah, hanging out. 
Yeah, this is and this is one that uh, Pete's pulled out and used it when um, some of our other shows. We used to like treat three comic money where we share our favorite covers, and this is one of the ones he pulled out. I don't even remember I, what the theme was supposed I don't to even be. Remember what the topic was, but I'm like, no, nope, I'm using it. He's like, are, I love this cover. So, are we at that part in the show? Can you show mine? Can you show my uh, what I've used? You got my red Sony up there. Oh yeah. Where is it? We showed it before yeah, the show. So started. many. So many. So, ah, of course, we all know that so Mike's good. a giant Red Sonja fan. So, he, he would love to hear the story of how. Yes, please. <laughs> I can Just, tell you the story of this cover pretty easily. Great. Um, cool. When I moved to Philadelphia, well, I've known Nick um, at Dynamite most of my career, but I live in Philadelphia now, and Nick lives right across the river. Hey, right there, so. I'm over in Jersey. I'm down right hey, in Philadelphia. Uh, I, you know, I'd see him. He grew up here in town, so I'd see him now and again. Um, this was just a piece of colored paper that I was trying to see if I could make gouache work on it. So it was just something for me. I was sitting noodling around, um, seeing if I could make color work on colored paper. And Nick saw it, and his eyes just like fell out of his head. Like I gotta have it, JG. Can I? Can I put it on the cover? Sure. Knock yourself out. <laughs> of this, so. so was the co What color was the paper originally? Um, it's sort of that bluish gray that's on top of the rock there. Okay. You can see oh, the okay. highlights. Hmm. So everything just... else is just pushing it higher or lower key okay. in the value you don't so still you, own that piece of art by any chance do you <laughs> God, a long time ago Damn. <laughs> did you did you try that again on other pieces did you end up liking using colored paper with the gouache yeah i still do it from time to time um it's it's kind of an old painter's technique especially oil painting using a colored ground mm -hmm. uh or a tone, just a value, a middle value. So you push your high lights higher and your darks darker off of that middle. Yeah. That I've seen, sense. I've seen people like do the, I dabbled. I'm not anywhere, but, but like seeing from the standpoint of when you oil paint, just taking that and pushing the, the darks one way and figuring out where it all goes. And then you paint on top of it. Like you just yeah. start washing and that thing. So I've yeah. seen and played with that. And I love that aspect of painting the, building and, and taking the darks and then bringing out the color and the highlights and just those highlights are so much more powerful on the dark side yeah. and all that or even starting with two gessos b mm. before you do anything yeah, exactly. like a dark yeah. like a dark gesso at the horizon and down and then a light gesso up and yeah. then kind of work if it's a landscape or something like that and then pushing your characters or your buildings or whatever forward off of that and giving it real depth i only know what you're talking about because of bob ross <laughs> <laughs> hey, I watched a lot of Bob Ross to go to bed. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, he does that. He does, so yeah, yeah, he does do that. That's true. I didn't even think of that. That's true. He does do that. You, you're going to show us a happy tree? No. <laughs> Bobblehead. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> Bobble yeah. Bob. Yeah, Uncle Bob. I should have oh, worn man. my Bob Ross t-shirt. That's, That's awesome. That's for me. A beer and some Bob Ross, you know. <laughs> so soothing. Man. I love it. Put you right to sleep, man. I love it. <laughs> it's great. Okay. Like a baby. Sometimes it keeps me up because I want to see him finish. <laughs> I know. I know, me too. Well, well I don't want to see him finish, finish. I don't want to see that last five minutes where he throws the extra thing in because he's got more time. <laughs> no, he's driving nuts. Like, stop. Please stop, Bob. You're done. It's beautiful. Just talk to us. It Show us your squirrel. Show us your squirrel. Show us your squirrel. <laughs> it puts a tree and that covers up all the work. Oh, man. I'm like, come on. <laughs> Something about just the sound of that big brush scraping on that surface. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, that's nice. I miss, I miss it. <laughs> I miss it. My grandfather was an oil painter, and and I uh, so I, we would go. I would go to his house all the time, and uh, he did he did down in his basement. So I'd go down there, and the smells of everything. Yeah. Um, I can yeah. still remember it. And there was Bob Ross on on the TV, and I'd be watching that, and he'd be painting in the other room, and and uh, and I just I have that still sort of like in my nostrils, and that's like you know 30, 40 years ago now. So uh, you might want to pick else. your nose and get that out of there. No. Yeah, yeah. No, not at all. I want it there forever. Uh, my new paintings, though, I've I've had to um, train myself 
to paint without any of the chemicals, um, mm. which is tricky. So I, I love that smell all my life of mm. you know, the turpentine and the <laughs> oil. Um, so I know it's better for my health, um, you know, post cancer, but <laughs> well, I do miss all that miss heavy odor of the oil painting studio. Yeah, my mom used to use oil of clove yeah. as well. So yeah. There was that smell going on all the time too. And we're, there's a lot of artists in, in my family, so and I, I just love I love that. Yeah, that, you must miss that. But 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 you still get to work at least. At least there's some things now that are chemical free that do the same job, which is great. Yeah, I got rid of all like my cadmium colors and stuff and got replacements, and I'm using like walnut oils and um, stuff like that that have. They don't really have a lot of odor, but if you use them right, you can get the same kind of techniques. Okay. It's fun. Okay. That's uh, sorry. It's one's like, I'm so fascinated. I'm like, I don't want to go play with some walnut oil paint just to see the, and compare it. Cause like, I'm sure going, but my tube of paint is like six years old. It might not even be paint anymore. It might be just the red, a red block that adds some, <laughs> get out some Crisco and see if it gets, get it to, to work again. I've done some. I will never show you, JG, ever. Chris and Pete, I'll show you guys. You can make oh, fun of me on the side. <laughs> not a chance, man. Not a chance. <laughs> so, so, JG, what are, I mean, I know you say you have something in another room you can't show us, but like, what have you been working on here lately? Because, like, when we tried to pull up your stuff, we're like, okay fanzine and comics behind and all those things are not great for showing most recent stuff. So just so we know, so we can throw in some great covers that you're working on now or that you've got coming out or whatever. Um, let's see. I've been doing some covers here and there. Um, I have a berserker cover that should be pretty soon. It's somewhere. In is that. it for issue one or is it for, no, that's the thing. I think most of the issue one covers have been dropped. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I think it was, if I remember the script right, it was a second or third. So is it Keanu? Like, I mean, everyone's like, <laughs> <You're up>. go on. <laughs> I would love for it to be a berserker. Well, no, I know it wouldn't sell, but it would just like, instead it's like a cat. It's the berserker cover and it's just a picture of a cat or something like, and just go, everyone else is doing Keanu. So I just went the other way. Or I did, uh, who was it Theodore Logan and instead of. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, like this issue came out not that long ago, but this was a hidden gem. So I'm assuming this was old art. This Black Widow, did they it reuse? Old art. It's yeah, old that's what I've kind of figured because they called it the hidden gem cover. I'm like, oh, so that's you. It's an old um, cover that I'd done years ago. Um, the main thing I'm working on right now is not really covers. Um, I don't know if you keep up with any of my social media stuff, but for the past few months, I have been dropping some stuff from a graphic novel that I'm working on. And um, I got a call from a publisher recently. It said, is anybody publishing this? <laughs> I said, well, you know, we can talk. Um, <laughs> so I think I've just about got a deal in place that's going to keep me busy for the next couple of years. Um, yeah, nice painting that book uh, that's great and that's it's something that I, I worked on with a friend of mine about 15 years ago we started and when I got out of the hospital I was like I'm not going to sit on this stuff anymore I'm just going to do it it's mm -hmm. one of those things you know I'm going to do it I'm going to do it and you get busy with the next job and the next phone call and the next job and the next job um but I don't want to run out of time. I, I've got stuff I want to do. Yeah. So I'm doing a lot of my own work in addition to uh, working on covers as well. That's good. I can't wait to see the passion of that in, in, in my hand at some point. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you said your Instagram, so I just went and pulled an image. Is this one of them from the book? That no, you're on? no that, that's another of my oh. little project. Is <laughs> I've been doing Lord of the Rings. Um, watercolors kind of in my for myself in my own spare time nice so now yeah. uh, i gotta go back through and go where okay now i see that you got like several lord of the rings inspired pieces another yeah. one of my favorite things That's in the world lord of the rings. There. um there's a death of theoden in there i believe um you got the spider that's my favorite right there yeah the, the, 
there's a lot she of lob. for paintings I haven't mm -hmm. done yet. I was gonna say Aragog. I was like, no, that's Harry Potter. It's she lob. <laughs> she lob. <laughs> yep. I can geek out about that all night. We'll do a second, <laughs> a second podcast about Lord of the Rings. I'll, I'll show up for it. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an English teacher, so I mean that's I love it. That's even when I hated all other books, I still loved Lord of the Rings. Yeah, and it's one of those books I read regularly. Every few years, I read it again. Um, yeah, they're dense. They're, there's that is not a fast read. <laughs> even when you reread it, it's definitely an immersive experience, which is what's great about it. And I always find more stuff. Um, mm. Those old Hildebrandt calendars when I was a kid just sort of, it lit my little, um, you know, 15-year-old <laughs> brain on fire. And I, really? I always wanted to illustrate that book. In fact, when I became a little bit proficient in watercolor, the first art that I ever sold was Lord of the Rings paintings at a little small gallery in Baton Rouge. Um, <laughs> I have no Whoa. Idea what Wait, you're an, a, are you how did you end up in a gallery in Baton Rouge? You've you've been <laughs> New York and Philly, <laughs> New Jersey. And <laughs> Philly. Chris's brain just Everywhere exploded. Was, just getting out of Louisiana. <laughs> it's called so, transportation, Chris. It, I, it doesn't <laughs> exist. I mean, I I've, <laughs> I've been in the same place all my life. Come on now. <laughs> big huge part of going to New York for me was Spider-Man comics as a kid. Mm. Seriously. It was Would you try to go to Empire State and University and then realize it didn't exist? <laughs> <laughs> yep. my, my comic book artist was Ross Andrew basically when I was a kid I was right transitioned in um, from the crew that was working on it before. Um, yeah. Ramita and um, that those guys, but I would look at those Ross Andrew pages, and you could follow Spider-Man through the city. You know, he had obviously worked from reference because all the locations and everything he'd shot with a camera. And I was like, I'm gonna live there one day. I'm gonna be like Peter Parker. I'm gonna you know, <laughs> run around Manhattan. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to so, think of why I moved there. I've, I've moved to Manhattan three times, lived there three times in my life. It was not because of Spider Man, but I don't remember what it was from. <laughs> uh, so I, I did, I want to try one more time on Instagram because I just want to see if this is it. Yes. Okay. I found yes. a my new top secret project. Oh, it's top secret that's on your Instagram. So <laughs> <laughs> the working title is Dust to Dust, and it's set in the. Um, the uh, Dust Bowl in the 1930s. Okay. okay. Oh, I definitely see that now that you give it a title. I'm like, oh. Grapes of Wrath kind of. Yep. Yeah, yep. Grapes of Wrath. Steinbeck and other. Yep. So are you are you sticking to sepia tone in those colors, or are you going to actually bring in a bring? Yeah, the whole book is sepia. Okay. Nice. I That's just cool. thought it felt right for the theme, you know. Mm. It's not only the uh, the Dust Bowl and everything's like it gives it that feel, yeah, of, um, that situation, but also it's like an old movie as well from the era. You know, it's not black and white, but it's sepia, so it's it gives it that sort of aged photograph. Feel. Yeah, it definitely gives a vibe. I'm just yeah, immediately that's looking at cool. it, brings you to a different place. And if this is one page, I can see why this is going to take you two or three years to do because <laughs> this is amazing detail in this one page of what, not 10 panels? I mean, wow. How long so, does something like that take you? Like a page like that, fully like rendered that. in its final a stage? A couple days. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Couple I can days. see why that was years <laughs> i tried to get all of my research done like i'll design the page and then i i have files and files and files of um old um pictures here and reference material like one of my best things for reference um is the old sears catalog because it's oh, yeah. every freaking thing you know, if you, you want to know something from the time period, you just pull out the old Sears catalog, and there it is. You know? I love pulling out those old National Geographics for the ads. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. pull out the, the Cadillacs are in there and the, the, clothes, the flapper outfits, and you're like, 
<laughs> yeah, this is what I want to learn how to draw. That I yeah. love the style of it. So, yeah, growing up in Louisiana, my dad was always a gearhead, and he loved old cars. So he always had me back in the yard, wet sanding some old Model A or something. He was going <laughs> to repaint and redo. <laughs> And um, I guess about 15 years ago, after he retired and was kind of kicking around, um, and I'd made a little money off some book or other, I went and bought him a, a Model A um, that was just in pristine condition, so he'd have <laughs> something to play with. Yeah, Is it still That's in awesome. pristine condition? I guess would be the question then. Or, the, um, or, is it, or did he make it less than pristine? And he can't really do that kind of work yeah. for some health problems. So he actually sold it to the auto dealership in the town where he lives. Mm. And it's right there on the dealership floor. So every time I go see my dad, I That's drive by cool. and see the old car. Yeah. It's That's cool. Awesome. That's really. So JG, thank you so much for joining us. Um, oh, sure. I, 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 I love this thing too, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm like, well, especially because there the show's about to come out what, next year or this summer, the uh, Amazon's Lord of the Rings thing. Yeah. So, so we might we might actually be emailing you going, hey, you want to come and talk? Let's talk Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Please, let's do that. Even if we don't record it, let's just talk Lord of the Rings. I don't really care yeah. if it's on tape or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to the painting studio and I'll paint like Bob Ross while, while we talk about Lord of the Rings. <laughs> well, Dude, will like, you do that? Yeah, <laughs> you know, we need to rig rig one of those cameras. Uh, a lot of I see a lot of that times where you have it. It's not you anymore. It's just you drawing and just talking as you do. And it, like sometimes it's so fascinating. But we, we've all clicked on Instagram and watch guys just oh, yeah. show what they do or yeah. freaking uh, Perillo sits there and all. I mean, it's not even him painting. He just pours the freaking whatever stuff on his painting and then pushes it around. I'm like. You made it shiny. Now it's amazing. I don't know what shiny does, but <laughs> you put the varnish on, it brings out all the depth of that color. Wow. He that's like his only thing he ever Instagram. Like you see his paintings and then you see that. And I'm like, what okay, but that okay, now I'm sold. Now I'm gonna buy that cover whenever it comes out because he freaking showed me that you made it glossy. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, well, that would be I would love to do a show with you just doing that. We're just we're just on ch chatting while you're while you're doing stuff on the side would be amazing. Yeah, that'd be so much fun. Bob my Ross would be style, to try to mess you up. Bring my squirrel. Absolutely. We have a little squirrel that comes by for nuts every day. So you know, just invite him in. I, I just want to see you paint and see like Mike scream and all of a sudden the line curls and like, oh yeah, Mike messed up that that it, I'm buying that cover because Mike's line messed it up. That's the stuff, man. Though no, that's the stuff. That's why I do this show. That's what I want. I don't care if I don't care if anybody watches it but me. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> It's great. It's been great to talk to you. It really, really has. Thank you so, so very much for your time. I really appreciate you putting up with my nonsense. It's been fun. No, uh, we, we love, love stories. That's We love talking books and talking stuff. Yeah, uh, art. I love learning about art and how artists work. Would inspire, me too. It's just fascinating me. Me too. Uh, Thank you. I much. hope you keep doing it for a few more years. I hope so. I hope so. I'm looking forward to seeing all that new stuff come out. That would be great. I'm looking forward to that graphic novel especially. Oh, uh, thanks a lot. Maybe you'll help push it a little bit for me when it comes out. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yes. Yeah, we, we have we have made every per, every interview we've done. We've made the money just strictly because we spent the money. <laughs> yeah, whether yeah. or not anyone else. Yeah, you sold. You've at least sold three copies already. I mean, so there you go. <laughs> just go into the comic shop, man. It's just yeah. yeah. It's been two years for me. Oh, I was in lockdown for the first year after transplant, and I was just getting back out in the world. Like, boom! See, uh, so that was, it was the, the quarantine was not bad when we could. No one was buying or selling. No stores were open. But when stores started opening, you start going, "I got to get out. I got to hit the store. I got to." And then I think like I've made this giant order at my comic shop of books I didn't want mm. strictly because I wanted to shop. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, but yes, yes. Thank you so much um, for joining us. And a pleasure. Thanks. Once thank you. Once again, guys, this is uh, CBSI. This is comicbookinvest.com. This is the comic book contributor, comic contributor chat. I'm going to learn how to say that freaking title I made up <laughs> for the show. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and we'll see you next time.